Here's Laura Coleman and Adam Shapiro. Yeah. I've got a little something for Laura here whenever you want as well. Cool. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Question? Um, oh, I'm trying to think if that uh, classroom scene is that, that good. All day. <laughs> Kids are funny because uh, every time we, we came in, they like made up their own lines. And they would say it like each time, like they knew that it would get in there. And uh, after three times the song, they were like, oh, yeah. <laughs> but they were awesome. That was a good thing. It's my favorite song from the movie. I'm sure. I love that song. Yeah, none of the, none of the kids. There, we didn't really shoot that scene like a normal scene. We, um, I shot it more like a documentary. We kind of had everything set up, and then told Dominic to. He knew basically what ha had to happen in the scene, and so I I was never directing anybody. I was, if anything, I would whisper something to Dominic, and he would tell the kids what to do. So they were always listening to their teacher. Um, Story. I mean, he's not, he's not especially likable in the end of the film, and needs to grow to understand him a little bit more as the film goes on. But the, the rhythm of the film, if you want to use the musical term, is I think what I really enjoyed about it, like the way you paced it and how it unfolded. Can you talk about your approach to the material and the character, please? Yeah, um, I don't know. I wanted to, I mean, I've had this happen to me so many times before where I'll, I'll meet some, and a lot of times they are singer-songwriters for some reason who end up becoming friends of mine or artists of some kind who I think they're just total ass for some of these things. And there's always, and, and then at some point um, I find out that we're like, they're amazing, wonderful people and I just, uh, and we're really good friends and then I think back to the moment where the shift happened and I saw that they're either just insecure or there's something about them that that puts up that dick hand. And so that's, that's where I think that when I started writing, why I wanted to tell a story of like, of a guy who, we actually toned him, surprisingly, we toned him down with certain things that we cut out of the movie, because I wanted him to be, I wanted you to just hate his guts at the end of the first act, and then as soon as the sisters arrive, and as soon as you see like the home video footage, you, you just start seeing another side to this person, and seems to work. I mean, people usually hate his guts at the end of the first <laughs> act. Um, and so that was, I mean, that's basically where it originated from. I don't really know, I haven't quite, I'm still a new filmmaker, I haven't quite figured out what my process is, so I, I have a hard time analyzing myself as to like how this story evolved, but, so I can't really. <laughs> Just to go off of that, like, how much room did you give Dominic to play with the character? Like, did he do most of it on his own, or did you, how much did you actually direct him? Because it's a pretty powerful performance. Um, there was, yeah, I mean, Dominic was, was on board from the very beginning. I wrote the piece for him. Um, Dominic has a history in, in, um, and he was in a short film of mine a few years ago intense character actor and um, he's very method and I've always wanted to do something with him because he just like completely throws himself into whatever character he's doing and and then I saw him he was performing on uh, on stage in in Chicago in the Jersey Boys and when I saw him performing there um, I that was for sort of when I came up with this idea of doing a character-driven piece that revolves around a singer-songwriter so we can incorporate music and, and have both of those talents together. But, um, yeah, I don't know. So Dominic was, he was on board from the beginning of exactly, he knew the story and the character front to back, so it wasn't a ton of directing going on. You know? Do you have something to say? So funny just to imagine him in Jersey Boy. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. Like, Who loves you, pretty? I don't know him. 
Are we passing around those? Um, oh, no, oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna be passing around clipboards. If you like the movie at all, please put your email address down, and we'll just keep you updated. We're gonna be doing a self-release, and we're just trying to get as much support as we can of the movie. Um, so if you put your email down, we'll just keep you updated as to where it's playing, or if there's going to be a uh, DVD release later on, we'll let you guys know how you can get that. Yeah, um, I actually lived for 10 years, like five blocks away from the Casbah. Oh, so, nice. so uh, you know, I, I had read that it was filmed there and everything. I wonder how, uh, did you film like during the daytime? Was it a special show, and were there other bands on the bill with, um, you know, the... That's the Casbah? Yeah, Casbah. Yeah, he, uh, Tim just gave, we, we talked